what you're about to see is a 35 minute video of me doing a leg press. No, it's not the world's longest set. It's actually a video of me and Tom analyzing Tom coaching me through just a three minute leg press set. As part of my incredibly immersive educational experience that I've been having here at RTSHQ, on an every other day-ish basis, Tom has been taking me to the gym and in between his own sets, where he talks me through what he's thinking, how the way he's taught certain things has changed over time, and the modifications he's made to machines, he actually puts me through my paces on my own. This video is not just meant to show you a three minute clip of me doing a leg press. That would have been quite easy and, and quite cool because you could have seen some of the intricate cues that someone uses in order to get someone to do a certain version of a leg press better. This is a much more accurate reflection of what my time here has been like. The continual analysis of what we've been doing, reassessment of how that could possibly be optimized. And I record everything because a lot of the stuff that I hear first time round doesn't even really sink in until I've managed to watch it back. This video won't teach you how to teach a leg press. It's mainly here to show you that even though every rep might even look the same to you, they're really not. And Tom is here trying to give a few of the hows and whys that he was thinking during the process of coaching me through that set. I'm providing the client's perspective because everything that he's saying to me is not just some protocol that he's regurgitating from a book. It's all based on how my form looks today, what we worked on last time and how well I managed to deliver that and what the goal of today's session and the intention of this exact set is like. So sit back and enjoy. This is gonna be an abbreviated version of my Instagram TV and then the full length version will be available on YouTube. So now think about a whole leg thing. Don't even think about any specific part, but it's like, a, it's like this tree trunk and you're using this whole thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And mostly to shove your butt back. Forget the pushing forward. You're trying to bust through the pad. So let's talk about that for a second because <clears throat> this idea um, of shoving your butt back is really tough for people because it's not just a, as you experienced, if you just try to get your butt to go back, if you think about it or you think it's supposed to move, it doesn't work. It almost requires, sometimes the way to teach it mm. is to actually have their feet against something like a rolling stool and say, now look, when you push, you're going backwards. Mm -hmm. So you get some experience, some oh, sensation. The other way around. Yeah. Okay. So you actually get, I'm thinking about what I just did. Yeah. Because you were thinking about shoving yourself backwards on that stool, right? If you were doing that. So experience. now you've got something to emulate. Yes. Yeah, so okay. you get on there and you realize it's not just, I didn't do this <laughs> to move my butt, right? Yeah. So that's a cool thing. But I used to call it a reverse action cue because reverse action in old kinesiology terms simply meant when, usually more to a joint motion, uh -huh. when one end is moving versus the other, meaning if there was elbow flexion, normally we would think of the hand moving towards the shoulder, but yeah. elbow flexion in a chin up would be your upper arm moving towards your forearm. Mm -hmm. So that's what they call reverse action in engineering. I think it's called inversion and they don't have any, they don't have any allegiance to which one started. It's just mm -hmm. the invert, right? So I really changed it here more recently, um, and I'm glad we're talking about this because I'm going to bring it up in a thing next week in an update a class. But now I really call it an inversion intention, going yeah. along with the true engineering word, and it is an intention, not an action. Mm -hmm. And and that's just huge. And I'll tell you where I first started playing with this was on a, a pull down. You know, people want to use, of course, their whole torso and hip extension, everything to do the pull down. And I started thinking, man, if you would try to pull yourself up, you can't do a pull up and pull backwards. Yeah. So if you imagine you're pulling yourself up to the bar, your chest to the bar, it's a very different thing. Well, I guess you you kind of can do that when you're doing a pull up because your your base can swing. So people do kind of pull up pull backwards when they're trying to swing themselves up, but you got your legs they locked. They can't pull backwards because if their arms are bending, they're going up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean they'll 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 kind of try to see if they well, can yeah, use yeah, momentum. That's, that's not that's just a But totally with a pull down, thing. you're locked in so that that can happen. What you're really anyway, right? doing, what you're really doing it becomes obvious, and it's not magic, but it goes a long ways to eliminating what I'm gonna call cheating. Mm. And quite frankly, I don't give a crap what the world does out there. I don't care if they cheat. But if the goal was to be more pure mm. in the exercise, right? And if you're thinking about moving this stuff, can we see that? If you're thinking about moving this stuff, you will do all kinds of things in an attempt for, for you, not just you, your brain, 
Yeah. Independent of your intention. If you think, I'm going to shove this out, you will, your, body, your brain will figure out every ounce of anything it can get and every drop of motion out of everything in between. It's good at that mm. because, something we might want to talk about someday, it's more efficient for your body, brain, mm. to accomplish something if it's throwing every guy at it it's got. Mm. Guy meaning muscle and joint. Yeah. Right? So what we're trying to do is actually create a different version of efficiency that could potentially be more effective at the actual goal of doing this, which is probably not, it could be just moving weight, but ironically, the people that cheat the least are the people who move the most weight. Power yeah. lifters, <laughs> right? So um, if someone's thinking about shoving backwards, the intention of moving the unmovable, the support or restraint, mm -hmm. then what happens is, you, there's no your brain doesn't start looking for what else can I do to get this out here mm -hmm. does that make sense you experienced it yeah, yeah, yeah but even with your good awareness of you because mm -hmm. most people don't own their bodies simply meaning they don't know what they're feeling you can lay them down into a bench press and go well, what do you feel and they go my calves I mean that <laughs> kind of stuff right but also just the idea that they're doing something separate from something else is impossible to most people yeah you know, like the, 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 to some degree, there's the example of the pat your head and rub your stomach, although that's a bad example, but similar in that your brain's got to figure stuff out. Well, this is pretty cool because once you start trying to shove that backwards, and it's, it's a progressive cue for people. Sometimes they don't get it at all ever. Sometimes they don't get it in the beginning, but later as they get to where they own their bodies more, they get better at it. Sometimes you'll stumble onto a cue and they'll go, well, why didn't you say that the first time? And you're like, I did two years ago, but you weren't ready for it yet, apparently. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's a progressive thing, but it's a really fun thing. And what always disturbs me about stuff like this is when people, trainers or whomever, think it's cool, see some value in it for themselves, and apply it to everybody across the board. There is no good tool that is good for everybody. Well, then it's also being able to differentiate the specifics of that, right? Because when we discussed this last time when you, you gave me that cue and I was working with that for the first time, I I just thought, okay, this is the this is just all that matters is think about pushing the seat back. And then the next week I was working on a machine where the foot plate stays still and the backrest and was moving. And I come back to you and I'm like, it feels like shit when I do it on that. And you're like, yeah, because you've got it back to front. <laughs> you can't just take this But I didn't tell you cue. that. Yeah. Because I was just trying to get you to experience. I wasn't I, I didn't need a lecture at this point. I was well, if I was really teaching you, I'd be like, listen, the gist of this is try to move the part doesn't move. And then you would have gotten there and said, let me try that on this thing. And you would have figured it out eventually, yeah. right? But I mean, it's, it's, it's also the danger of just hearing Generalizing. single cues and just being like, okay, I know what I'm doing now. Like, here I go off into the world. Man, it's that thing. It's I, I use it too much, but it's just the best analogy. If, if the only thing you have is a hammer, every freaking thing's a nail. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I've got I've got a hundred year old guy who can't begin to do that kind of stuff. He might actually benefit from it the most, but the cool thing is he's so slow and controlled, he doesn't cheat anyway. Mm. He's, he's better than most trainers at working out. There's also a sort of slightly counterintuitive aspect to it that I found that you kind of have to get over first as well. It's like, you know when you get on a train and you think it's gonna be going forward and then suddenly it starts going backward mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, what's that? And like the first couple reps kind of feel like that where you're just, you, you know you're trying to push in the other direction but the other thing's moving and you've got to like, rewire your file to be like okay this but that's is. where it's there's a little bit of a shortcut a motor learning shortcut if i had taken you over and done the rolling stool yeah thing. okay so that's okay, it really is that. helpful um in some ways and then if i actually put tubing on the top of that stool and hooked it to something so you actually felt some resistance going back so it's not just rolling yeah so there's little things like that and everything physics itself is experiential mm. contraction is experiential cheating is experiential and when you're doing something pure it's experiential so this whole thing is about not just people so many people oh intention you're just thinking something different like i want to be big it's like no you're actually trying you're doing it as if your brain was trying to do the other yeah that can't happen hmm. but you have to wipe the slate clean to your point i think yeah and get the other crap out of your head and that's really the hardest part um in addition to all those things i mentioned first is is and so many times it helps to close your eyes Especially when you're, when you're on a machine, it doesn't matter. You're not going to fall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you're sitting there watching this move in front of your face, trying not to think about move that moving, 
Most people can never do that. Right, straight away. I, Close I, your eyes. Yeah. So some people do it because they, they believe they can concentrate better that way. And I, I can't disagree with them. I don't know. Mm. But the bigger thing is you're not, you're not actually, your only visual input is the exact opposite of what you're trying to get your brain to do. That's a, that's a misfire. Yeah. That's, you just remove the head fuck by closing your eyes and not having to think about what's if, going if on out there. Blind people would be phenomenal at this because yeah. <laughs> everything is what they're experiencing within. Yeah. Not stimulated by, but I see something and they don't even know they're seeing it. Yeah. That's a subliminal ish type thing, right? Mm. You're seeing it and you don't even you're not even sitting there going, I'm all conflicted because I'm watching this and thinking they're not doing that. It's just happening. Yeah. So anyway, let's go on a little bit. Because when you do that you'll stay seated. So Stop. So when you came back, now on a leg press you know, people that get the hard, fast rules and don't know where the rules came from or why, mm -hmm. um, they'll say, that I am a good trainer. I don't let anybody do a posterior pelvic tilt or lay words. I don't let my butt curl up. Yep, standard. And that's the, you know, we need to go back to why that matters because people like sound bites. Well, that's the way you do it. It's like, but there's a reason for everything. These aren't just random rules that we pulled out of our ear. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's important in a squat for very different reasons than it is here reasons that actually make it less important here in order for you to fold up this much there is absolutely no way especially with any version of mass here or on your stomach mm -hmm. would be it fat or muscle there's no way, way to fold up that much without those things becoming axes in a sense creating some of this mm -hmm. now what you're probably doing it's not even visible from the angle of this video we would have to really probably use a fluoroscope to detect spinal motion and we would probably see that as you're as you're going back there to that flex, hip flex position, you're probably, sacrum never leaves the pad, but it's rocking back that way. Okay. And when you're going back the other direction, it'll probably rock back the other way because you're trying so hard to get it seated. And we'll, if you're doing it right, we'll never see that rocking and it won't hurt a thing. Mm -hmm. Squats are a very different thing because you're loaded up here. Yeah. Here in this exercise, you're loaded there. Yeah. You should almost be able to hover right there without pushing into it. Mm -hmm. So there is no moment arm of the loading. And that's one thing that's important for people to learn. They're going, well, here's where the load is. The load always has another place. And that's like, your, yeah. Well, just like in an arm curl, where's yeah. the other place? It's the floor. Yeah. That's where everything's shoving against, right? If you're doing an arm curl on a trampoline, it's going to be a very different thing. Yeah. So this is, this is somewhere in here is the other component of the tug of war ish thing, right? Yeah. Um, if we were talking about gross tug of war stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so what you do here, how much you allow it's a learn it's a learning process you can't ask for perfection from the beginning mm -hmm. the cueing you're using right here will assist in minimizing that movement so it doesn't end up being a sacrum off of the pad thing yeah. right but that's a, that's an interesting thing and, and from this point of view you look rock solid i just want people to know that the outside is always a deception to some degree even when it's perfect now the better people get at seeing observing and the more I tell people in class, you need to get to where you can micro observe, but that doesn't mean you immediately micromanage. It doesn't mean someone's prepared for that. Mm -hmm. And you experience that yourself across two different workouts where your second one with this type of deal, a uh, different leg press, yeah, but yeah. they were both foot plate moving leg presses. But you were so good at that, we got to mess around with some other cues that just dialed it in even more yeah. to where it's like, my God, there's nothing in the world but these legs, primarily hips and quads, right? right? Yeah, it's yeah, really yeah. cool. So anyway, this, this doesn't do this justice, but it's fun to look at. Another thing that's really common, you've got this chest up. People like to say back straight, but I, nobody can see their back. Yes. So I'm going to say chest up, and that never fails. One of the easiest ways to allow too much butt curling up mm -hmm. is if you're flexed in the thoracic spine, there is no way to keep this where you want it. Yeah. There's no way. But, but scapular retraction and thoracic position, I should just say scapular position and thoracic position go hand in hand. So if you protract, it's almost impossible if you stay retracted and, and flex your thoracic spine. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's, that would just be weird. Yeah. But as soon as you protract, it's almost impossible to stay erect in your thoracic spine. So mm -hmm. keeping that position is critical. And then you almost don't get to where, well, based on this back, back pad angle, with all that, you don't even really need to hang on here because you're not going to shoot out 
when yeah. you start rolling everything forward like this, it starts to get weird and you feel like you're going to go somewhere. I think actually by the end of it, it almost felt like the, the main reasoning for this was actually to hold my posture as opposed to hold me in the seat. So. And that's why I was showing you on the other leg press that, that they can't see. Yeah. But I was actually having you push on the handle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to show me. And you're, but you're still doing the scapular thing. Yeah. It's still a way of almost like shoving yourself. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Yeah. I, 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 kind of the interesting thing here with this as well is it's like, it's not, not necessarily to discuss the specific rules, but to discuss the fact that there is always an element of something going on here uh, once, once you're coming to this kind of depth. And it's the process of becoming an educated professional to gauge what is appropriate and and where those boundaries lie that's that's absolutely it recognizing there's things we'll never see mm. so when people go oh my clients are all symmetrical and i'm like well to your really bad eyeballs because i will show you a million ways they're not mm. but but does it matter yeah does the left does that level of detail that's why i'm saying i like to know what's going on but that doesn't mean i flip out about it and that doesn't mean i can fix anything mm -hmm. but there might be reasons to try to encourage somebody to be more solid or to be whatever, yeah, as best they currently can. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's a fun thing because anybody can continue to improve in that area. I've never watched anybody that I don't train that actually did, that two years later was still, I was still having them work on this kind of stuff, still reinforcing this stuff, you yeah. know what I mean? So anyway, one thing we can't see here as you go along though, you've got a foot position consistent with your- Seated, so to speak, more solid. Sorry. There no, you go. Oh. Could you tell the difference? Uh, so that's that's me saying I could feel the difference there as well, right? Like in that little thing we couldn't see. Yeah, in that little thing we couldn't see. <laughs> about shoving yourself backwards, or at least the sensation of that. You're not doing anything different. You're thinking experientially, experientially different. See, and that one was a little jerky. Mm, yeah. And this next one. See, I would say from the outside, your pelvis didn't go anywhere. Now, part of the reason this is part of the reason this is possible is because your legs are going beside your torso. Mm -hmm. Because if they go into your torso, number one, you get to cheat because it's a little bit of a um, buffer. airbag buffer, yeah. bounce off of it thing. Even yeah. if it's this much, yeah. this much doesn't even have to appear to be bouncing off of it. But you get the squish of the tissue and then back out. Mm -hmm. And people, people, and people that are insecure about this activity will always gravitate towards the center. Okay. And I'm not even talking about knees towards the center. I'm just saying they'll choose a narrower foot placement and they'll fold up like that. You know what I mean? But the way you've got it, obviously hips can't get wider. And what you're looking at here is not even a hip, hip joints in there. Your femurs are ever so slightly abducted. Mm -hmm. And this is fairly consistent. This angle, again, we can't see it's fairly consistent. But that you're also rock solid at because if we, this is an important thing too. Those things, that knee alignment, is a triaged basic foundational requirement. So if you, every time you go forward and backwards, mm -hmm. if the audience here could see in this plane, if every time you did it, your knees did something slightly different, we don't get to play this game. We don't get to fine tune when we're still not on the right radio station. Gotcha. You follow me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, a cue that we didn't talk about much, but we did actually more on the, on the 45 degree this past week, mm -hmm. Uh, putting, focusing the load on the outside of the foot drives the forces more towards medial knee. When someone pronates and caves in, the forces are more towards the lateral knee and you see that knock kneed looking position. Yeah. And you can spend your whole life saying to somebody, but keep your knees apart, but keep your knees apart, but keep your, and they can't because the forces are saying go together. Cueing should fix the forces. Mm -hmm. This is the cause of that in addition to whatever structural thing they've got that you can't do anything about, mm -hmm. right? But this is the cause of that. And if we don't take, fix where the forces are coming in and this tripod-like foundation, if this collapses, this knee's coming to me because the femur is angled that way. There's a great video I did on that on the website okay. where the close-up, and it shows what happens if we crash the foot down and it just goes boink. And you know, so all this stuff people are trying to do, and I don't even wanna talk about orthotics and all that, but I'm talking about another intention that must come before this cool stuff. You gotta pay your dues mm -hmm. and get locked in with all this other crap because you can actually do something. Even before load, significant load. If your knees are all over the place, why are you trying to work hard? Because you're just screwing stuff up. 
and it's it's funny because it, it's also so individual dependent right like if if you're if someone is coming up if you'd come up to me uh you know as, as not being you right if you're just a random personal trainer you come up to me and your 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 go-to thing was is on a leg press weight on the outside pressure on the outside of your feet like i've i've played around with this for long enough to the thing in my head at this point is spread your pressure evenly across your feet because i know that i don't have unless I'm not thinking about that, I don't have an issue with the inside outside mm -hmm. thing. But if you come up to me and, and been telling me that just on like a, 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 a reel of repeat that you just say, you yeah, you're just every vomiting time, words at the same every time. That right? would have screwed this up for me because I don't need to think about that. But you're already doing it. Yeah, because I've been because doing it way, for long enough. And the way you think about when you're saying spreading it out, you're spreading it across your metatarsal heads outside down to the calcaneus. Yes, that is what what you're thinking is what we're trying to get people to do. Mm. The problem is when we say outside of the foot, it is a pendulum swing to try to counter something that's already too far the other way. Yeah. And the problem with most trainers and most attempts at it, people go way too much. If I see the inside of someone's uh, metatar first metatarsal head. Off the pad. Off the pad, or even, First of all, if it's off the pad, it's already exponentially too far. Or if it's You can tell if the pressure in the shoe has changed. Right. That's what I mean by micro-observe. I can, I don't say me like I'm great, but anybody who's really looking yeah. starts to see changes in where the pressure is before anything actually moves significantly. And that's what we're looking for because it's about forces. You know, these are yeah. all pretty subtle things. And, and the problem is too, if they're going fast and they're just flopping around through everyone, you can't fix anything if it's over before you work on it, you know? Yeah. And you got people who are going like, but I get tired and my legs are big. And it's like, okay, but that's irrelevant. You know, you'll still end up in my lap as a patient someday if you're not careful. Yeah. So anyway, let's see, let's see what else is happening. The level of concentration that you're putting into it is demanded. Did you let go of anything? Regroup. Create what you did in the first rep or second rep. Stop for a second. So I hope they could hear that because what I was saying, instead of continually trying to reinforce those things, I'm asking you. The first thing that was really silent said, did you let go of anything? You need to try to regroup. So I'm putting the responsibility on you. I'm not gonna sit here and hold your hand across the street for the rest of your life. You're gonna to have to figure out and monitor inside of yourself. And everyone needs to be better than the one before it, no matter how great you think the one before it was. That is your responsibility. Yeah, you gave me the checklist and you're now going, have you kept all the boxes mm -hmm. ticked? And I'll let you know, sometimes when you haven't, sometimes I'll go, what happened with your pelvis? Mm. And if you weren't paying attention to it, I'm simply drawing your, drawing your focus back there, mm -hmm. right? And, and instead of me just constantly throwing instructions out at you, which I think is, a, that's not teaching. Teaching is at some point letting go of the little kid's hand when you're crossing the street and saying, all right, now what do we have to do? We have to look both ways, very good, right? So they, when they have to come up with the answers, it's a very different learning process. Mm -hmm. It's an ownership of information. Yeah. You know? All right, so let's, let's Oh, and sorry, and, and then one one more thing you were doing there uh, when we stopped it is you were saying you as opposed to just giving me loads of cues, you were taking me back to the sensation that I had on a on a on my you said, I think you said your first, first or second reps, right? And and okay, that's my datum point. That's what I'm trying to get back to. That's your current baseline of perfection. Yeah, yeah. It's not perfect, but it's just current. at least it's the best it's I've done current. so far. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. Subtle, subtle differences. Stop. So another thing, back here, every one of these, this, this, I'm, I'm going to address range of motion now. Oh God. Because <clears throat> it's not always necessarily about getting as much as you can. It's about on each rep finding what you own. Mm -hmm. You can go places and let stuff happen. You know what I mean? You could also have stopped about right here instead of going to here and got major benefit out of it. But it's also cool to explore where can I go on this particular rep with this particular level of fatigue, with this particular level of control that I've learned. And let's find out what's there. But you have to be in control enough to stop like that. Most people, if I said stop, 
there, at any given moment. At any given, and you should be able to stop if you're in control. Yeah. And it doesn't just mean slow; it means controlled. I should be able to say stop, and you should stop. Even if you're going pretty darn fast, because you're fast is not inertial stuff taking over. Fast is not letting the weight move you. Even if you're going relatively rapid, relatively on an eccentric, you're the one making that happen. Usually, people are just like, "Let it go, push. Yeah. Let it go, push." It's a very different thing. So coming back here and exploring like every time, never, ever, ever just showing up somewhere because you think it's where you're supposed to be or because you were there before, but always going, let me see it this time. Maybe if I'm even better at this, I might get more, I might get less, but the less might actually be more beneficial because I'm getting more out of the tissue. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. So, so it's a yeah, deception. This range here is only as relevant as the, the, all the other stuff, the positions that I'm maintaining elsewhere. And if you fatigue a little bit, some people will go and they'll stop they'll stop way up here on the next rep i'm like why why didn't you explore here take this sensation that felt locked in at this position and look for it next time and you can start to tell man if i go i'm going to stop here instead of here because i i feel like i'm going to lose that cool uh controlled sensation of mm -hmm. contraction and stuff so it can only it might just be this much it might be a half of a centimeter mm -hmm. Oops. Mm. Mm. Yeah. A bit slide there. So it's kind of falling apart there to our eyes. Yeah. Depending on what someone's watching. And here's the thing about watching. You have to have, this is going to sound dumb. You have to have to some degree yeah. uh, regulated peripheral vision. Okay. So I'm not trying to see the hot chick over on the side over there right but what i am trying to see is as best i can and it's difficult i'm pretty i pretty much have a tendency to stare here and i mean stare yeah like to try to live what's happening there in fact i'm never really looking i know what i know what mistakes feel like and i know what good feels like and i'm trying to feel what you're feeling mm -hmm. but if out of the corner of my eye this thing that has been solid all along starts to fall apart and i shouldn't have to stare at it to see that because you're already pretty good at it i stared at that Probably not for you, but I would have stared at that maybe for a year before we got to play with this on somebody else. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And that's the thing in, that, that trainers do is if they do get a pretty decent bullet point list of things that are can be incorporated in this, they start throwing out too many things. And you'll notice one of the things here that I'm doing, mostly because you're allowing me to let you do that, if that makes any mm -hmm. sense, is I'm being pretty quiet here. And not because I'm not watching, but I'm letting you think. I got I got to stay out of your head some. Yeah. You know what I mean? And sometimes, like I said, when I, when somebody's losing it and they're getting really tired, here's an interesting thing. And I, di I didn't say it to you this time, but on the next time we did 45 degree, the 45 degree uh -huh. I said several times, and I did yesterday on something on back, for, I don't know what it was. I said, um, calm down. Oh. Because what people do when they start getting to the, to the I'm dying type thing is that's where they want to cheat because your brain's going come on come on come on just get out from under this it's, a, it's bad it's not good you don't have to do this you don't have to do this benny yeah. so what if you just calm down and go it doesn't make a shit whether i finish this or not but i'm going to calm down and i'm going to dig deep yeah and that's a really different thing when you're when you're and i don't want to say relaxed but when you're not frantic mm -hmm. when the rep doesn't become anxiety ridden you know what i'm saying and the whole thing gets i'm going to say it from my point of view a level of fun most people don't experience they don't actually, you can grind out some amazingly controlled reps if you can completely get rid of that guy in your head saying, come on, just throw it. Come on, it's okay. It's too hard. It's too hard. You got to get rid of that guy. And I think that's, that's also a lot to, got a, a lot to do with having practiced it not a lot under those circumstances that aren't that sort of high stakes, right? Not d refining that process and, and taking, getting used to ticking these boxes. Because this, this weight here is not heavy. That we're working with here which is a learning thing we were playing with right? exactly yeah. so because i'm able to stay calm and maintain that composure because this isn't this isn't frying me out right i i, I don't have to worry about moving it so much i mean i'm making it i'm making it difficult well, see there's a brilliant thing because you are intentionally we are yeah making what's going on in your head the challenge uh -huh. you're 
control is now the challenge of the exercise. This can't be a challenge mm. if that's the challenge. Yeah. So this has to be just enough below to go, well, I've got some stuff on here so I can feel when something goes goofy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's also enough that I'm getting tired when I'm doing it right. Mm -hmm. But you could have done 20 something oh. reps, right? Forever. Yeah. So, and then the goal is, well, when do we get to go up here? When it's not quite the same challenge to, to, to keep some of this stuff, right? To where you can actually add weight and go to complete ridiculous failure if you choose to and are prepared for it without any of this stuff bailing on you. Yeah. I th the other thing is as well, I think if we're talking about that sort of that progression process as well, and you're coming back to this, how, how you were focused here because you know that I've kind of got this under control. Yep. I would assume then if, if we were still, if say we go back a load of steps and we're actually m much more concerned about this at the time. Yep. Am I right in assuming that this, we would not be operating in this range I would be situation. much uh, unlikely and also I'd be much more forgiving about things happening here because the load the load would be relatively insignificant because ah. I can't load you up when this thing is in break I mean, break yeah. in two position you see what I <laughs> yeah, mean yeah yeah okay so it all kind of fits together yeah. when people when when the when the more treacherous thing is what we're working on <laughs> you the, sorry this is not this is the last goal yeah the last goal is the challenge of the load uh -huh. Everything else is preparation for that. It's like you don't start building the top floor first, man. Oh. You got your foundation, sixth floor, then you can do the twelfth floor and just load the shit. Yeah. Cool. What's left? Probably me just making a few more silly faces. Oh, and then there's me on the hunt for that the, same sensation. The perfect rep. Yeah. Last yeah. <laughs> well, couple on you all the way back. So you're really looking for a lot of stuff now. You're doing goofy things here a little bit, minutely. See how they're going side to side a little bit? You're looking for where to be, where to position, where to... Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Which is all still beyond perfect compared to most clients. Touch the parking block, mentally regroup, off the parking lot slowly, but then the second you do that, get after it. Thank you. That was actually really nice and with some degree of acceleration. Mm. And it, it's, it's funny because I'm getting frustrated here because it's still not quite as good as that first one. <laughs> it's like you're going to break the handles off the machine. Uh, yeah. well, if you can't regroup, then it's because it's your double. Okay. I missed that. I think what I said here was if, if, if you can't regroup, it's because you're done. That doesn't mean you can't move the weight more, but that means you're done with doing good ones mm. which in reality is the point of this exercise right the of point all, yeah of all exercise oh this, yeah, yeah. In, of in, this, in particular yeah. this scenario we're that we've got now. here yeah, yeah, yeah. is we're trying to we're trying to ingrain in me the the habit of doing this as well as possible not moving the weight and it's it's i'm going to extend that a little bit to the world out there trainers need to realize that any idiot can make people tired Mm. And that's what's so funny is, is people are like, oh, it was a good workout. I'm like, how do you know? Define good. Well, they got tired. I'm like, dude, I can have you do anything. I can have you do algebra for an hour and you will be tired. Mm. Different kind of tired. But panting is not the goal. That needs to be the exhaust of having done something cool. <laughs> yeah. You know? Still not quite the same as the beginning. <laughs> Yeah, you're so dumb. <laughs> so your face looked like it was a thousand pounds when really all you're trying to do is, you can't even feel it the same way. That's what people need to understand is what you're looking for, you can't feel because stuff is already starting to bail on you in terms of that degree of, of ownership. Yeah. You can do it, but that's not the game we were playing. I mean, you could do the shoving, but yeah. this, and as soon as you're what the world wants to call proprioception, which is really, it's far more complicated than that. Yeah. But, but as soon as that starts to go away, man, you're hunting in the dark. Yeah. I mean, that, and that, that's what it was. You know, the, the, the concentration and the focus and the sort of belligerent defiance and like, no, I, I'm not done. I've got one more. Mm -hmm. But in reality, that's literally what, it, I, especially because I had my eyes closed, it felt like I was fumbling around in the dark trying to f like feel where my joints are and what I'm, what I'm, holding in place and at that point i'm so fucking fried that i haven't got a clue and this is fried too yeah that's what i mean yeah i meant yeah, that's yeah. fried this yeah yeah my brain is so fried that I, I i couldn't have told you if i was sat on a chair or running across an ice rink 
Well, I think that's about it from your face right now and your eyes are open again. <laughs> yeah, I think I think another thing that's kind of interesting to address here though is is the way you were kind of getting me to to pause on at, at the bottom of some some of the reps and like regather myself and, and reset and then go for it again, right? And I feel like a lot of people would, would look at that and be like, oh, well, you, you, you paused for a few seconds. That's not a set anymore. You've stopped your set. It's not a set. It's learning. Yeah, who gives a fuck? Like, <laughs> I mean, what's so funny is, um, see if this analogy works for you. And I, I uh, we're going to have to use the English language and, and penmanship or, or writing, okay? Okay. But when, because um, I don't know how it works anywhere else. But if you were learning to do the alphabet when you were a kid, mm -hmm. you, you learn... Um, what we would call print yeah. letters first. And you even do it on lines to show you the boundaries, but eventually they want to get you away from the three lines or whatever, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, the dotted line across the middle. Yeah, I know yeah. what you mean. And, and even the first time is just tracing sometimes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I want you to think about this. If I do a letter and come over here and start and I'm regrouping and I'm really starting each letter with its own intention of being a good one. Mm -hmm. What happens to people even in their signature when they start doing script, <laughs> it all goes to shit fast. When you start running things together seamlessly, they, they start decaying so fast. Yeah. So to me, you have to earn the right to do seamless reps because the last one has to be as good as the first one. And if you're learning, and here's the thing, what's really funny, I could take everybody out there that thinks that's not hard work. And if I make them do X number of good ones, and we're not resting in between. This is what people don't get. If you actually let go of any of that, like you're starting, that's a new set to me also. Yeah. This has to, this has to, every bit of stuff that we were working on cannot budge when you're down there. It's only your brain going, okay, got it. Let's go again. Mm. That's it. It's that long. Yeah. And people think it's a pause like, well, should I count to two? It's like, shut up. You're missing the point. It is a mental focus regroup. And if you let go of anything in your body, well, now we got to regroup everything. Yeah. And that's just dumb. Now we're 10 seconds in a rest period because it's oh. really not. It'll, it'll wipe you out. In fact, in fact, in fact, I, I might have it on video somewhere, but we were doing specifically <clears throat> the Cybex VR2 row. Mm -hmm. And I would have people, <clears throat> and we did it on two separate days so they weren't necessarily fatigued on one or the other, do perfectly controlled reps as best they could, seamless, okay? really good ones and mm -hmm. then we had them do the regroup your brain at the end yeah sometimes setting down sometimes not i actually preferred to have the weight sit mm -hmm. but they didn't relinquish the weight all of it if they had 200 pounds on there they were maybe taking 100 off so they could regroup yeah but their grip was just as tight their sca everything was just as tight mm -hmm. they actually got fewer reps than the people who did them seamlessly whoa every time now, if someone's resting, no. But they're keeping everything tight and their reps are more intense because their brain is badass the whole time. Yeah. As opposed to their brain going, eh, uh, uh, And just use whatever and get it done. Yep. And, yeah. So I'm not saying everybody should do that, but without a doubt, the beginning of everybody's experience should be motor learning and motor learning quite frankly should never end i don't care how strong someone is there's no power lifter that doesn't work on his technique mm -hmm. there's no olympic lifter that doesn't spend most of his time on technique and they're not doing reps stuck together olympic lifters yeah so the problem is people don't know perfection or the quest for it so they had never experienced anything but pausing in between which is just a completely relinquishing of control